Hi, I'm Craig Dumont uh, with uh, Pastor Mark Barber again for a conversation through the book of Matthew. Um, we have really had a, a, an excellent introduction to kind of a reinter... I, I shouldn't say reinterpretation. Let's just say God's interpretation of the Sabbath, right? It was a reinterpretation yes. um, in chapter 12 for the Pharisees. Uh, they had to be set straight on some of this stuff. Don't know if they ever were. But uh, Jesus... Uh, Jesus, of course, quoting scripture, backs him into a corner, doesn't he, Mark? Yes. And so let's, uh, we had talked the last time about how the, uh, in the last uh, conversation about the disciples supposedly breaking the Sabbath, at least by the Pharisees' account of it, by just simply picking some, some wheat and eating, I mean, it, breaking kind of their fast on a, they were hungry, they wanted to eat on the Sabbath. They did the work of, they did they, the by work picking, of, yes, that's reaping. Yeah which you're not supposed to do on the Sabbath day. Right, and then right, rubbing right. was another. They broke the Sabbath twice in yeah. rubbing the grain. I yeah. think I don't think Matthew mentions the rubbing of the grain, right. but I think one of the other accounts mentions that they rubbed the grain. That was threshing. Well, so they you were, were sure. reaping and yeah. threshing, and you were breaking the Sabbath, and you were, you know. and, and They'd have been good U.S. government uh, bureaucrats, wouldn't they have? <laughs> I'm not going to go there for the moment. But we're going to pick up the... The story, the, yeah. the, the ratchets up, the, 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 the story ratchets from this point up, and it says, mm -hmm. And when they departed from there the same day, they went into their synagogue. Mm -hmm. And behold, there was a man who had a, man, a hand that was withered, paralyzed. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, who is there among you that shall have a single sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, that you would not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much more is a person better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. Then he said to the man, Stretch forth your hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Okay, we have another situation. Hey, this Mark, is... there's just a thought I was thinking of. Can you imagine? I mean, we have the accounts of the gospel of, of Jesus' life and ministry, right? Uh, at least, at least from the time that he was, you know, that uh, that he entered public life. The kind of scrutiny that he was under every single day. I mean, that, that's. I mean, I, as I was, and he didn't even that, have didn't even have a Robert Mueller. Yeah, at I, him, uh, right? I, I guess not. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's amazing. The scrutiny and and how many people must have been watching the life and actions of Jesus every day? I mean, to come up with stuff like this, you know that there was you know setups. You know that they were following him around. I mean, they. I mean, the the beyond what the disciples, you know, as they were learning from him. Boy, what what an incredible scrutiny must have been upon his life. Yeah, there's one thing that's interesting in this section. There is no time markers mm -hmm. indicating another day or another yeah, occasion. Yeah. This is the same day, and this is kind of a, a picking off. They w w went to the Sabbath mm -hmm. sometime the same day, and Jesus enters into their synagogue, the ones that accused uh -huh. them, and they ask him this question not out of good faith. Right. They ask the question that they might trip Jesus up into being a Sabbath breaker. Now, the idea is that they felt that people could not be healed on the Sabbath day. In fact, in another account, they said, Jesus, there's six days in the week you can heal people. Why don't you heal them then? Or ask for healing then, but don't desecrate the Sabbath by healing somebody. So, you know, we know that th this Sabbath controversy, you know, right. all the Gospels, there's, you know, this is a, a, something Jesus did as a matter of routine. And he did it in a, as a matter of routine in a kind of a provocative way but in no place does he actually even break their idea, him personally, their, even their tw twisted idea of Sabbath. Well, they almost have, I mean, I, but, I, they, I know they weren't thinking about it, but they almost have what now passes for a Hinduism type uh, thing. I mean, the Hindus don't want anybody to move out of a caste system or become healed because it somehow it messes up. The, the vibes of the universe. So, I mean, but, they, they, but, but you're so stuck up yeah. on the burden. This man yeah. is burdened. Yeah. His hand is withered. How long has he had no rest? You know, if you only can, you know, there's two hands. Now, if it's the hand he eats with that's withered, then he has, you see, the, the, the right hand and the left hand are very important in Hebrew is because you took, you ate with one hand, you took care of business with the other, and it's to put it yeah, <laughs> bluntly. Okay. And the idea that you were a thief that cut off your right hand. So that the shame is that you had to eat the same hand you wipe with. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. And, yeah, and you see, and that and that was the mark of shame. Now, hmm. if this man had a withered right hand, mm -hmm. then you know that was kind of a, a curse on him. He was had the same curse as a man who was a thief, hmm. who would have his right hand cut off. Might have been some good advantages to be a Benjaminite, though. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, just, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm not going to go no, there. No, it's just... interesting, but I'm left-handed, by the way, so yeah. I, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm, I'm sinister if you follow yeah. Latin. But, um, yeah. And so, what if Jesus were, on the Sabbath day under this occasion, to were to reach out and grab the man's hand, then he would be performing healing. If he just simply spoke a, a command, it would then the man with the withered hand, and it's kind of ironic, stretch forth the hand you can't move. And he obeyed the commandment. That man became a, a, a breaker of the Sabbath according to the Pharisees. Hmm. But Jesus is interesting. It's his disciples to pluck the grain. Here it's the man with the withered hand. It's just obeying the command of Jesus. Stretch forth. Your hand. His idea is stretching forth your hand. He's doing work. Uh -huh. He's doing work with a hand that didn't work. You know, yeah. This is the um, irony. Otherwise, Jesus does this in a sense to, to, to make the Pharisees look utterly ridiculous. But Jesus technically does not break the Sabbath even by the Pharisees' interpretation. Uh -huh. Now, Jesus is not going to, you know, until it's the proper hour and the proper time when he has to confess before the seed Sanhedrin that you'll see the Son of Man coming down. In other words, it became a blasphemy charge that would result in his execution. You know, it wasn't his hour. And so Jesus is, uh, he's just really kind of playing along game. He says, okay, I'm not going to break the Sabbath. Just stretch forth your hand. And when Jesus says, you know, you could preach on the Sabbath, you could talk on the Sabbath, or else the Pharisees would be breaking the right. Sabbath by their reading of the scripture and by their prayers and by their conduction, conducting uh -huh. the synagogue services in their synagogue, right? right? And so Jesus is just speaking and says, okay. You know, and it was his right, and any, any citizen of Israel that's been barred mitzvah but had a right to speak in the, uh, you know, equal amongst men to speak in the synagogue. He has as much right as anybody else. And he mm -hmm. says, okay, well, let's talk about a story. And maybe one of the Pharisees actually had a sheep that he rescued on the Sabbath day. If you had an only sheep, it was your only sheep, and he fell into a pit or she fell into a pit on the Sabbath day, would you let it sit there and be exposed to the elements and be bleeding for mercy and just close up your ears and not take your sheep and do work and take your sheep out of the pit? What Jesus is saying, if you do, you are not breaking the Sabbath. You right. are giving, the whole Sabbath was to give rest to man and beast. Right. That sheep that's in the pit has no rest. Right. Uh -huh. Until that sheep is rescued, there is no rest. By your having mercy on a sheep, mm -hmm. you are giving rest to you know, a distressed animal on the Sabbath. It's interesting. In fact, if they would not do it, they would be breaking the law because God does have some laws about how to care for even with an enemy's animal, right? Because if they saw an enemy's, uh, uh, you know, um, animal, an ox loaded down or, or trapped, and you know, and, you know, yeah, and, they had an obligation. And they to had rescue. an obligation to rescue it and take, in fact, even take it back to the to the enemy, but to make sure that that animal was in good shape and 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 take care of it, right? So I mean, so there's, I mean, there would be. There, there was. Yeah. They would not be. I mean, they would be violating God's law not to take care of even the animal, right? Well, but they were violating the Sabbath by right. not giving rest, right, to that animal. Yeah. So, in other words, it says, and then Jesus goes and argues in typical rabbinic fashion from the lesser to the greater. I don't know it's via Homer. I forget what the what the you know the the technical Jewish yeah. uh, term of exegesis here from the le le less lesser to the greater. And he's saying, From the sparrow to the human. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, and it's basically saying, you have a man who's trapped in his body. His hand does not work. The hand, maybe it's, I don't, I tend to think it's the hand of honor, the right hand, uh -huh. that didn't work. And this man had no rest. People thought this man was cursed by God. Yeah. He was basically, 
uh, the noble man caught him as a thief, but his hand withered up because obviously God saw that he was a thief. Mm -hmm. God saw the sin of the blind man and he made him blind. You know, that's the yeah. way, you know, who sinned this man or his parents. Sometimes it was the parents' sin. You know, this man was born with a withered hand. It was the parents' sin. And it was, you know, and it was the idea is that taking away the use of your hand and having to do everything with your uh, unclean hand. Mm -hmm was a mark of shame and now his work of shame has been taken away and it says stretch forth as I said stretch forth well he couldn't move that hand it was withered mm -hmm. stretch it forth and you see and in the very act of a stretching it forth he, he comes to rest he comes to wholeness mm -hmm. he comes to shalom he comes to the Sabbath he comes to peace you see and that is the real irony of, of what we see here. And technically, just like the, Jesus commands in John 5, take up your mat and walk. And they said, you're doing what's improper. Man, it's 38 years. Yeah. Now, he's in the wrong place. He's in the temple of Asclepius at the pool of Bethesda. It was, a, it was a dedicated to Asclepius, the Greek god of healing. He was looking for healing in the wrong place. And, uh, but Jesus still found him. And uh, he said, take up your mat and walk. And that's why you, because he was in the wrong place, he went to the You know right that place. that didn't really happen. Well, you, know, that, that, you know, according to even some of our top biblical scholars, that's just a gloss that, that was added later. Uh, that, that's an old Jewish fable. Well, no, the, the stirring of the waters, <laughs> the stirring of the waters yeah. is, is, is called to be a, yeah. a gloss. I'm, yeah. not going to, I'm not going to address that but the pool of Bethesda has been yeah. found the five pools the double Mark's not I am the <laughs> double pool the five porches has yeah. been found right and it was found to be a temple of Asclepius yeah and that's the snake god that looks like the medical profession you got you know with snakes mm -hmm. going around it and uh, he was looking for healing in the wrong place that's why Jesus finds him now in the right place in the temple so you've been made well sin no more lest a worse yeah. thing happen to you than what being paralyzed on a mat for thirty eight years? You see, but, well, he, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Just, uh, but but it says, I mean, in the Bible, it says an angel, an angel of the Lord stirred the waters. No, I, I know that. The, <laughs> and Origin has a whole lot of uh, you know he he has some, some commentary on that particular uh, thing. It's certainly an old part. It could it may be original. People that you know, like Doctor Gage, who are trying to make a perfect chiastic structure says that the stirring of the angel is necessary to set off another appearance of the voice of the angel uh -huh. in, uh, uh, of the Lord speaking in John 12 I have glorified it and will glorify it again um, I'm not you know, sometimes you can make a chiastic thing out of everybody and yeah, I was, was going to say I and, 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 and I'm just saying it's, it's, it's a, the, the yeah. explanation is yeah. goes back to some very very early texts uh -huh. it's not in all early texts um, whether um, somebody wrote a scribal gloss in the column explaining what happened somebody thought oh that was somebody who left something out and, and another scribe put it in I'm not going to I'm not going to go there it would be seem odd though that the angel is going to bless the stirring of the water in a temple of Asclepius mm, uh, yeah. but that's neither here nor there I'm not yeah. going uh, but the, what I bought of John 5, 4 <laughs> yeah. is that Jesus didn't put the burden yeah. on him. Jesus told the man to put, pick up the, his mattress and walk. Right. And then they, they found out Jesus did it. He said, why are you commanding people to break the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. And said, this man has had no rest for 38 years, and I made him whole. I mean, it's the first day that he's had rest. And, you know, and so I'm not saying it's not just, you know, in the... Mark, Matthew, Luke, the, the Sabbath controversy yeah. is, you know, throughout. Right. And, that's, and that's one thing that's very consistent in the presentation that Jesus is adamant about mm -hmm. is the proper interpretation of what Sabbath and rest is all about. It says the Pharisees went out and they held a council against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus found out about it, he withdrew from there and a great crowd followed them and he healed them Oh, what day is this? Sabbath. Now, now, he is 
got really that's, got to meddle. I, I was going to say, that's got to really tick off Pharisees because now all the people are starting to walk way too many steps. to. <laughs> and they're following yeah. Jesus. Yeah, they're, that's what I'm saying. Right, they're, and they're, a great crowd. Yeah, and they're And they're walking away from the Pharisees. Oh, well, that's got to make them even worse. I mean, and you know. then he's not just healing one man uh-huh. or telling somebody. and he, Now he's healing a huge crowd on the Sabbath day. There is no time break. It's not like on the next day. Yeah. Yeah, they took a council to destroy him. And what and that brings another question. Was it lawful for a council or a court, even in, you know, to meet on the Sabbath day to bring proceedings against a fellow Jew? I, that I, would be I, holding court yeah. on the I, Sabbath day. I, I I don't know, but I'm gonna guess no. <laughs> I would guess not. Okay. I I mean in other words the Pharisees saw no problem in their breaking the Sabbath, the taking a counsel uh-huh. that they might destroy Jesus. You see, the, that would be uh, breaking the Sabbath themselves. They saw no problem with them breaking the Sabbath, which was and which was the greater break of the Sabbath. Of course, they were meeting together to do act of injustice, uh-huh. which is even worse. And the idea that they might trap somebody on the Sabbath, like to try to trap Jesus with the intention of bringing charges and destroying. That is work. Mm-hmm. They broke the Sabbath again. Yeah. And that, that's, you know, and just to show you the inconsistency. And it says, you know, Mark, it's interesting because you, you'd have think, you, you'd have think, you'd have thought, uh, you remember, it, it, according to God's word, you, you mentioned, you know, that that, uh, that they had, you know, that maybe there was within a group that there was a radical uh, move towards towards the Sabbath laws because of because of their uh, because of their banishment or uh, or uh, uh, being spread out and scattered around um, the um, but it's but it's interesting that they wouldn't have like picked up on all the rest of the law. For instance, you mentioned about the Sabbath being something for but all of God's law all of God's law is really for their benefit, right? Yes. So God's law. Uh, makes them uh, wiser than their enemies. It brings safety. It brings healing. In fact, you know, Jesus says, "You'll be the first, not the last. You'll be the head, not the tail. Uh, I'll, you, none of the diseases that are upon the Egyptians will be upon you." Uh, all of these things, and, and and I understand that there's, you know, there's other places where it talks about there's always poor in the land, all of that yes. things. It's so taking care of widows and orphans, all of those things. I understand all that, yeah. but it's interesting that by the time Jesus comes, the and the Pharisees are so preoccupied with their with what they perceive as their ability to be so insightful according to God's law and to kind of rule and meddle in people's lives and put burdens on them. They hear Jesus I mean, what an indictment on the Pharisees. Jesus doesn't come during a time when the people are the head. They're rather the tail. I mean, they, I mean they're nothing compared to Rome. They're under uh, the authority of Rome. Uh, all these people that are demon-possessed that Jesus sees, uh, mm-hmm. all the people that need healing from diseases, I mean, my goodness, they, I mean, they should have realized that something is wrong here. We're not, do, we're not approaching this right because look what's happening in our situation. Yes. The, the idea is that if there's power in the land, yeah. have they been true to the covenant? You know, if there are widows and orphans that aren't cared for. Right. Yeah, and, that, and that's the key. There's always been widows and orphans, but the way that you treat them is key, right? Yeah, you know, the, one, of, the, one of those things that's not understood, with, you know, in the last time Jesus is in the temple and recorded in Luke, uh-huh. it talks about the men came in and they threw all kinds of money into the sound box over yeah. the offering big, they could hear the ring of gold and the yeah ring of silver coin and the, oh how much they've given for the marble and the gold and the wonderful structure of the temple and it says another woman came in with a woman and she threw in two mites uh-huh and jesus commended for throwing in all that she had but what was she going to do once she threw those last two mites in after she made that, you know, Elisha's the in the, or Elijah in the widow's house. Yeah, I'm going to make a cake for me and my son, and we're going to eat it and, and die. Yeah. So she gave her last two mites. It's not a matter of that. It, and what that meant, and what Jesus, if you look in the context of what Jesus is saying there, is she gave all she had, and here it is. All these people are throwing in gold coin silver coin 
you know, all the ringing, you're getting mm-hmm. all the accolades, because whatever you gave in, all that that woman did, yeah. thud, thud, two little copper coins, you know, they, they hardly made any noise at all. They all talk about this wonderful gold of the temple and all the wonderful marble and uh-huh. all that they, these rich people had given out of their abundance. The poor person had given it all that's left, and it was her survival was up to the hands of God. Mm-hmm. In other words, she was going to go home and die, and I think Jesus intervened yeah, somewhere or another, directly or indirectly, and saw that the woman, the widow woman, was properly cared for. But that was the last time Jesus was ever in the temple. And then he goes out and says, and the people are admiring the, all the temple and all the buildings, and Jesus said, not one stone will be left upon another stone. It's the idea, here's a widow woman that needed rest. And they were more interested in the gold on the temple, the marble yeah. of the temple, and uh, you know how magnificent the house of God was, and didn't care about the people of God, this poor little widow woman. Um, at any point, you know, where we can see oh, again and again, Jesus yeah. is going to reinterpret what the Sabbath is, and he's healing the people, and and by healing the people, there should be no sick among you. He healed them all. You're right, and uh, he's he is doing what the Bible says to do. The Pharisees are blaming the people of the land for being ignorant and stupid yeah. and uh, beyond you know, irredeemable, deplorable, whatever <laughs> word you're going to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the people of the yeah. land are cursed, not yeah. knowing the law. And they didn't do anything to help. They helped that blind man. No, they threw him out of the synagogue for being able to see, you know. Um, so anyway, we, we, we're kind of in the middle of a paragraph, but I think that we can, you know, we can pick up on our next video okay. at, uh, at this point. We, we's going to explain the rationale, but I think it's good to leave. And he healed them all, and he charged them that they should not make him known. And uh, we'll go the reasons why he, you know, he calls them to silence in the prophecy of Isaiah, um, so forth in our next lesson. Okay. Well, great. Thanks, Mark.